So let me turn on my video camera so you can put a face to a name. My name is John Meredith. I am a member of the Sumo Logic education team, training team, if you will. And I am based on the U.S. East Coast, specifically out of my home in Bedford, New Hampshire. So wanted to welcome you all to the metric workshop. This workshop came to be for two real reasons. Number one, our customers looked at our previous interface for metrics and said, you know, it's too hard. It's too complicated. And you know what? They were right. So our developers went back to the development, development area there and, and redesigned it, make it simpler and easier to use. And I think hopefully you'll agree with me today that when you play with it and see with it, you'll find it much simpler to use. So hopefully you'll enjoy it, enjoy the changes as much as I do. The second reason that we're doing this workshop is, quite frankly, a lot of our customers who use Sumo Logic, of course, mostly use it for logs. And the issue is, is that they're really not, they're not using the metrics as much. And they're really, um, quite frankly, you know, when you, when you uh, sign up with Sumo Logic, you know, you to ingest your logs, you get so many metrics free, and they're underutilizing those free metrics. And so we thought we'd put this workshop on to help promote and make people aware of metrics uh, and how you can do that. So the only question that I have for you guys, as I said, is uh, and if you got questions, feel free to ask them. As a guy who's been teaching most of my career, I can attest to you that uh, when um, you, know, you have a question, you help focus the instructor on what's important to you. And I appreciate that. We appreciate that. The other thing, too, is it gets your other classmates to think with regards to um, questions that they might have. So I would encourage you to ask your questions and anything we can do to help. Uh, and uh, we'll basically go from there. I am going to stop the video just to save some bandwidth here, if you don't mind. And let's go ahead and get started. So our agenda today, we're going to talk, obviously, about what a metric is, a little overview into Sumo logic, right? A little demo and data flow. We're actually going to make this hands-on. So we're going to log in here in a little bit to our training environment and give you a chance to do some things. Uh, I see somebody raised a hand. I don't know if that was accidental or not, but uh, if you've got questions, feel free to let me know. Also, I see a bunch of folks have just joined us, so I'm enabling their microphones. So if they want to ask questions, they certainly can. Otherwise, you can put them in the chat box. It's entirely up to you. Okay. So, no problem. Thanks, Steve. And like I said, let me enable some of these nice folks who've just joined us to talk. So our game plan here, like I said, is going to be you know a little, a couple slides, a little overview. Then we're going to actually log into the training environment. We're going to play with, we're going to run some metric queries and see how that works and see how that interface looks. Uh, and then we're going to go and talk about analyzing queries and dealing with our applications. We've got a bunch of pre-built applications with pre-built metric queries that you and I can run and see and, and play with. Then the last conversation we're going to have is we're going to talk about unified alerts, specifically creating a metric alert. So uh, we'll basically show you that, and then we'll talk about you know, where to go from here. So that's our game plan. And uh, as far as metrics go, right, metric is nothing more than a data point that measures the value of something typically over time, right? So, you know, you think about uh, those of you who have kids, if you've watched your kids grow and stuff like that, the height of your kid every six months, that's kind of a fun one. The weight once a week, uh, I'm not going to weigh myself once a week, thank you very much, but feel free to. So these are things you typically do something over time, right? And when we think about our environments, right, our, our company environments, you know, what is our CPU utilization over time? What is our disk space availability over time? Uh, and then, of course, we can also translate it to various actions as far as, you know, what is our SLA, our service level agreements, and how are we doing with regards to that? Those key performance indicators that we want to track, we can build a dashboard to or build some sort of a query here. This is ultimately a query. And we can see visually what kind of information and see how things are going, making sure that we're maintaining our, again, service level agreements, make sure we're maintaining our environments properly, make sure we're you know just seeing how many customers we have that are happy and, and that sort of thing. So we could have a metric that says, you know, uh, please rate us uh, for your customer satisfaction scores or, you know, your customer satisfaction type score. So lots of things here that you and I can do with metrics. Now, when we talk about metrics, we talk about something called data points per minute. So as I mentioned, 
earlier, a lot of our customers, when you purchase Sumo Logic and you say, I want to ingest this much data and you know, you're allotted so many DPMs, so many data points per minute. And many of our customers, like I said, don't even come close to using their allotted DPMs. And so that's, again, another reason we built this workshop, just to encourage you to take advantage of something that you're already, quite frankly, paying for. So we want to try to help you out here a little bit. Okay. A couple of things about metrics. We typically, when we ingest metrics, we don't store or ingest metrics that are more than a week old. For us, a metric needs to be fairly current, right? We want to be able to see it. We want to be able to analyze it. We want to be able to see. It. We don't want to go back a year or a month or whatever and start bringing in old metrics. It just doesn't do us a lot of good. So the same token, we will take that raw data, whether that raw data comes in every five seconds, 10 seconds, one minute, whatever. We will typically take that metric raw data and we will retain it for seven days. Then as we bring that data in at one minute intervals, we will calculate the min, the max, the sum, the count, uh, and the average. And we'll retain that at one minute intervals for 30 days. And then we'll also do it at one hour increments. And at one hour increments, again, we do the min, the max, the average, the sum, and the count. And we'll retain that for 13 months. Ergo, when you're looking at your metrics, you can go back you know, within a year, within an hour interval and see how your metrics have been doing. Or if you wanna go back within a minute interval, you can go back 30 days. Or if you wanna go back and see the raw data, the various metrics and stuff that you've defined, you can see it for seven days. So it's a pretty good retention policy. It works very well with our customers. And uh, like I said, I think you'll, uh, I think you're probably gonna be happy with it as far as looking at your metrics. In Sumo Logic, typically there are three phases to Sumo Logic. There is the data collection phase. We got to get data into Sumo Logic so then that you can run your metric queries and, and, and see what's going on. So that data collection phase consists of two things, consists of collectors and sources. Think of the collector as the highway on which your data is going to be ingested into Sumo. That collector, if you will, is going to compress your data. It's going to encrypt your data. It's going to send it to Sumo. That's all it does. Compress, encrypt, and send. So you'll find that if you're in a cloud-based environment, that collector already exists. It's hosted by us. You don't have to worry about it. If you want to deal with some on-prem equipment or some servers that you physically have, there you have to install this collector. This collector is a little lightweight Java-based application that, uh, like I said, will encrypt your data, compress it, and send it to Sumo. Then within these collectors, they're going to have sources. These are the sources of data that you're getting. If you're on AWS and you want to grab data from your S3 logs, so be it. That's a source. You want to grab stuff from your CloudTrail metrics? That's a source. Um, so you can have a bunch of different sources within your various environments. And obviously, our focus for this is mostly, you know, various host metrics or some sort of metric sources that we want to be able to bring in. Now, once that data comes into Sumo, then we can write metric queries in our case, or log queries, to analyze, build charts, build visualizations, and then be able to take those visualizations, those queries, incorporate them into a dashboard. So a dashboard consists of multiple queries, multiple charts, multiple visualizations that we can see, and then we'll also create alerts. Here in this one hour session that we have today, we're going to play a little bit with the metric operators. We're going to play a little bit with uh, the built-in applications, which have some built-in dashboards and things like that that we're going to use and see. And then we're also going to talk about those alerts and create some metric alerts. So like I said, those are the three things that we're going to do. Here are our metric operators that we can use. And if you'll give me a minute here, I'll actually get into the environment. I'll show you where you can find those. And I'll actually take the URL, the link for this, and I will copy it into the chat box in case you want it. Um, rather than um, talking about basic query mode, which I will in just a minute, why don't we log in and play around? So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you all to fire up Google Chrome or Firefox. Bring up those browsers, one of those two browsers, Google Chrome or Firefox. And I want you to go to service.sumologic.com. That's service.sumologic.com. The second thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pick a three-digit number, anywhere from 001 to, we'll say, 899. 
Okay, pick a three-digit number. I live up here in New Hampshire. New Hampshire, the area code is 603, so I might grab 603. Anybody from the UK, probably a big James Bond fan, will grab 007. All right. Somebody will grab one, two, three. Somebody will grab four, five, six, whatever you want. Select your number. Type it in the chat box if you would, please, just so I can make sure that we have a minimum amount of overlap. By the way, let me also enable a couple of folks who just joined so that they can uh, talk and ask questions if they like. So just bear with me a second. It's like we've got about 29 folks here. All right, so people are putting the numbers. Uh, you can't use 000, Muhammad. Sorry, it's got to be 001 or better. 001 or better. So it can't be 000. Sorry. And then I want you to log in as training plus analyst with that three digit number at sumologic.com. And the password for this month for July is a capital S U M O, capital S U M M E R, numeral two, numeral one, exclamation mark. That is our current password. Now, let me also take this information, if you don't mind, and let me copy it into the chat box. So it's a little easier for you to deal with if I copy it the chat box. So let me do that. Make it a little easier. By the way, let me put my contact information in here. And the reason I'm putting my contact information in here is because, like I said, next month, that password's going to change. I don't know what that password's going to be for August yet. Don't know. But when we change it, I'll know. And so if you get stuck and you want to play in our training environment, you can certainly let me know what password, you know, what, let me know, send me an email and ask me for the password. And I'll give it to you. Now, as I said, I asked you to log in. So let me show you what's going to happen here. You're going to go to service.sumologic.com. And that should take you to an interface that looks something like this. And then you can log in, like I said, pick a three-digit number, right? So maybe I'll grab 603 for argument's sake. So training plus analyst 603 at sumologic.com. And if I get rid of all of this, and if I turn it on so I can actually see what I'm looking at, the password is sumo summer 21 exclamation mark. Yeah. And you should be able to click the sign in button and it should in fact log you in. Okay. So it'll log you in and, and depending on which, you know, where the count, the person last logged in here or left this, uh, you may see different things, but you'll see, a, maybe you'll see a panel over here to the left. Maybe you'll see some stuff over here, whatever. I'm going to log out as that training analyst 603, if you don't mind. And I'm going to log in with my account. So in case somebody gets stuck, I have administrative rights can help you out. So what I'd like to do here real quick is uh, make sure you guys all got logged in. So uh, bear with me a second. I see we didn't, I didn't add the poll here for logging in. Anybody having problems logging in right now? Is everybody logged in? Anybody having issues? So again, you're going to fire up Google Chrome or Firefox, and you're going to go to service.simologic.com. Okay, thank you, Melinda. Then you're going to pick a three-digit number, anywhere from 001 to, we'll say, 799 or 801 or whatever. Um, pick a three-digit number there that you like and go log in as training plus analyst with that three-digit number at simologic.com. And then the password is capital S-U-M-O, capital S-U-M-M-E-R. -E I'm sorry. <laughs> Try this a little slower. Capital S-U-M-O, capital S-U-M-M-E-R. Numeral two, numeral one, exclamation mark. And that should allow you to log in. All right. So let's go take it for a spin here. And let's uh, let's play around. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, a couple of you acknowledge that you're in. I'm going to assume that you're all in. Again, if you've got any problems, let me know. But here over here is my navigation panel. If your navigation panel is not open, it's not a big deal. Over here where it says Sumo Logic and we got this hamburger menu. If you click anywhere up here, it'll open up your navigation panel. So here is our navigation panel. And here specifically, I'm looking at my library. My library is a shared area that you and I and others can see. This is your private area. And then we have also can mark things as favorites and 
we can see recent things that we've opened and so forth and so on. Again, if I have more time, I would go over this in nauseating detail, but we're a little pressed for time. Down here, we have our main menu. And in our main menu, if I click on help, here's where our documentation is. Here's where our community area is. And I do want to take out and point out a couple of things for you. So if I click on, and I open up this navigation pane, and if I click on help, and if I click on community, and if you click on community, here we are on our community that us and our, our partners and our customers all collaborate on. And if you do a search for slides, and you might think this is a little odd, but humor me, do a search for slides, you will see that we have a link for training and certification, lab, webinars, and slides. And if you click on this, you will see for all of our certification classes and all of our workshops, I'm surprised the metric workshop hasn't made it on here yet. I'll have to remind my boss, uh, but we should have a link here to a recording of this class. So give me about a week and we will make sure that we have a link so you can actually play this course back. And then you can also have a link to see the slides if you want to. So if you want to talk to your colleagues and stuff about what you learned here today, you'll be able to do that. And then I'm also going to have another link to a PDF document. Now, I'm going to send up this PDF document. And some of you may or may not be able to download it. And the reason is um, because of policies that your company may have with regards to Zoom. Your company may not allow you to download documents, but here is a PDF document. And by the way, I've opened it up, looks like this, student labs for metric workshops. These are the things that we are going to do together. These are the activities that we are going to do to learn the metric environment, okay? So just wanted to explain what's happening. Now, one other thing I wanna do is I could go into help, I could go into documentation, but rather than doing that, since I'm sort of old school, the way to get to our documentation, if you want to type a URL, is help.simulogic.com. Help.simulogic.com takes you to our product documentation. And you'll see that we've got chapters broken up for various things. In fact, we have a chapter here for metrics. And I could go into that metric chapter. And when you go into any chapter, you'll see that your table of contents moves over here to the left. And I could start reading through this information here about metrics. Or if there's other aspects of our product like APIs or Cloud Sim Enterprise that you're interested in, you can go into those chapters. By the way, you can also search for things. So if I go up here and search for metric operators, here, ladies and gentlemen, it will give me a series of links. This particular link right here is our metric operators that we use with metrics. So I'm going to take this URL, I am going to copy it, and I am going to paste it into the chat box, just to make it easy if you want that URL. Now, also, additionally, we've taken and created a PDF of our metric operators. So if I click on that PDF, here's a PDF that I can print out, put next to my computer, and these have examples of all the metric operators and what they do. So we try to make it easy to use our tool. That is our goal, pure and simple, okay? Let me uh, clean up some space here real quick, if you don't mind. And close that little rascal up. So let's see what we got in the chat, okay? There you go, thank you, Al, excellent. Yep, somebody asked the, the link for the, uh, actually, I'm sorry, Al, you. He posted that to the panelists, not to everyone. So let me copy it and post it back out. So thank you very much, Al. Uh, and I'm passing it back to uh, somebody asked if we can put the link to the slides and certification page. So there you go, uh, Vamsi. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to create a new metric. So again, in our little lab exercise here, it says select the new blue button, select metrics from it. So here we go, new blue button metrics from it. And we're going to create a metric query. Now, in our new metric explorer, we wanted to make this very simple for folks to use. But when you first open this up, depending on who the last person that logged in with this account, 
and how they left this, you might look like this, where it says metric, and then there's a bunch of underline, filters, underline, and add operators ghosted out. And if you're in that, if that's what you see, you're in great shape. If you see where it says enter a metric query, this is the advanced mode of metric. This is the old way that we used to see the interface. And people said, this is kind of complicated. So if you are seeing, it says enter a metric query here, and I don't need to type anything in. What I need you to do is go to the far right side where these three ellipses are, this more action button as we call it, click on it and switch to basic mode. And when you switch to basic mode, what you're gonna find is we have key value pairs, right? So we have a key called metric, and then you get to pick whatever metric you want. Filter, again, key value pair. Filter, and then I get to pick the various metadata tags and the things I wanna filter by. So this new interface is designed to make things a bit easier. Now, let's put it to the test. If I click on metric and I type in CPU, I see there's a whole bunch of different CPU values here I can use. I'm gonna use the CPU load average 15 minutes. So I'm gonna choose that metric. And that's all I'm gonna choose for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and click away just so that, that little drop down closes up. And I see I've got about 457 entries here, 457 entries. And if I click on the chart tab, I see this lovely spaghetti factory, which indicates all the various CPU load averages for all of my various systems. Okay, kind of nice, kind of busy. I could obviously filter it out and we'll get to that in a second. I could, if I want to, change this visualization from a line chart. I could change it to a column chart or some other chart. I could also change it if I want to some sort of a pie chart or donut chart. Okay, yeah, abstract art. You're absolutely right, Melinda. I could change it to a honeycomb type chart. And with this honeycomb type chart, if I wanted to, I could, of course, add some conditional values here. So that, you know, if I'm talking about CPU utilization and I'm saying, you know, it's zero to 70 or zero to 80, that's green. And then 80 to, or 81 to 90, that's yellow. And then 90 on up, that's red. I could obviously do that. So as you can see, getting around here and playing around is pretty simple. Hopefully it's simple. I think it's, I think, I, I hope it's, I think it's simple. Now, under filters, I do want to filter for perhaps a specific uh, CPU. So give me a second here. Let me change this back to time series. Let me change this back to a line chart. Okay, back to my abstract art. And then here, what I want to do is I want to filter by source category equals, and I want to filter for a specific source category. So here I can say host metric slash J Meredith, which is actually my CPU average for my computer. This is my Mac that I'm teaching this class on right now. And so I'm very easily, very quickly able to see my CPU load average for a specific load average here if I want to. And I'm looking at a specific environment. Now, maybe what I wanna do is I wanna add another query. I wanna see another bunch of things. So there's a plus sign over here that I want you to click on. And I'm going to grab the same metric as before, CPU load average, 15 minutes. And instead of, and again, I'm back to my abstract art, my spaghetti factory here. But what I want to do with these, rather than seeing all of those different values, right? Rather than seeing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an operator that says, I want to see the average of these things. And if I click on average, now it synthesizes this stuff down to its average. So here is the average of all of my hosts over time. So again, I got time on my X axis. I got values on my Y axis. And, and if I think about this, these, most of these are servers. They're AWS environments. They're you know, cloud environments. So their CPU utilization should be a bit higher than mine, right? I'm just a little, just a little workstation out here having myself a good old time. But hopefully you can see that it's pretty quick and pretty simple to be able to you know, get some information on here. And then if I wanted to, of course, I could add this to a dashboard, okay? So I could add this to a dashboard. I'm just gonna call this uh, CPUs 
of interest, whatever. Give it a name, panel title. And then I'm going to create a new dashboard. And you don't have to do this. I'm just going to create a new dashboard here. Just bear with me. New dashboard. And I'll type in today's date. Just so I can create a new dashboard. I'm going to select that create new dashboard. And it's going to add it to my personal directory. And here, when I click add, here is my new dashboard. And if I want to change, you know, its size, I can do that. And if I want to go in here and add other queries and other things, I can do that very, very easily. So my hope is that you realize that this is simple to use. And the interface is, I hope, not complicated. You're going to use key value pairs, right? Metric, filter, what do you want to filter based on? Any questions about this? Take that as none, so we're in good shape. All right. Let me also make sure everybody's microphones are enabled. Looks like a couple of folks have joined us. Okay. Okay. Where do these auto-completing metric names come from? In my sumo options, these options do not appear. Um, Brian, I'm curious. To, are, are you? Do you see? Hang on a second. Let me. Let me dump some of this stuff off. I'm going to delete this. Are you in this where you've got metric and then the underlines and then the um, the filters? And you, do you see this this structure or you've seen something different? Hey there, John. So um, in the uh, Sumo test environment, I'm seeing all of these metrics auto-populating when I start to type CPU, for example. Yep. I'm asking about my own co company's live Sumo environment. I understand they should automatically populate. That's what I want to make sure you're seeing the same interface. Uh, so I'm looking at in my own in my own company's live environment. I create a new. I'm in the Metrics Explorer. Yeah. I am in the. Uh, base you have the key value pairs here. And yeah, so when I click Metrics there, if yeah. I just type the letter C, for example, yep. the only thing that shows up is an option for custom search. See custom search. Yep. I don't see all of these like CPU options, for example. Okay. Um, hang on a second. Okay. Uh, yeah. Melinda points out we may they may not be sending metrics into Sumo. You may not have a whole lot of metrics, oh, but you I should see. see this automatically. Okay. It could be then that we are not ingesting any, any metrics. Yeah. Right. And, and that would make a you know a, a strong case or a strong comment for my case about a lot of customers do not utilize metrics very well. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, but yeah, thanks. No, that's fine. If you ingest metrics into Sumo, they should list here. They should be here. They should, you know, shouldn't be a big deal. So yeah, great. Okay. Uh, so I hope we cover logs to metrics, <laughs> Dave. We don't have time for that today, but uh, as Dave pointed out, we do have a feature in our product. So here in my Sumo logic environment under manage data, under my metrics, there is a feature where we can convert log data and extract the metrics out of that log data so that you can sit and see that. And we do cover that in the three hour metric mastery class. So it is one of the things we would recommend if you guys want to learn more about metrics is as a next step, you probably want to see about taking that class. Okay. Okay. Um, somebody asked a question. Are we going to look at how metrics get here as a source? Unfortunately, due to time constraints, we don't have that capability or that time. Again, in the metric mastery class where we have three hours, we do. We show you, we actually have you set up and ingest some metrics. So you actually get to see that process. So sorry, it's a good question, but I want to be upfront and honest and, you know, explain. So, all right. So the next conversation piece, if you don't mind, is now that we've got that demonstration done, let's talk a little bit about, let me go back a slide or two, talk about an analyzing metrics and benefiting from our built-in applications. We have almost about 200 apps pre-built with queries and graphs and visualizations and dashboards and stuff ready to go out of the box in various areas. So for example, if you're consuming Zoom and we are all consuming Zoom right now, we can see how our users are using Zoom. And some of those queries typically look at metrics, right? How it, you know, 
the amount of uh, bandwidth people are using and, and et cetera, et cetera. So we've got a whole bunch of applications and I'll show you what those apps are in just a minute. But these apps typically allow us to look at full stack observability. For those of you who've been hanging around Simo Logic for the last six months, we've kind of moved, uh, migrated our overall philosophy from logs and metrics to observability. We want to be more than just a logs and metric company. We want you to be able to have insight into your environment. And obviously, observability into metrics, observability into logs, observability into the process that occurs and tracing, these are things that we've added to the product. So regardless of what your infrastructure is, regardless if you're on the cloud and you're doing microservices and Kubernetes and Docker or whatever, regardless of what your app components are, your database components, your web server components, components, whatever, we can see this observability with these visualizations in our product. So you can bring this data in to Sumo and we can see what's going on. Now, when most people think of metrics, regardless whether they're on cloud or on-prem, they're thinking in terms of what is my CPU utilization, my memory utilization, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you could, and also there's obviously other metrics that you might want. But typically, environmental metrics are something that people are interested in. So that being said, I want to talk about two specific applications that we have that might help you. So here, if I go into, and again, my, if your navigation panel is not open, I can open it by clicking on the little hamburger menu. And if I click on my app catalog, these are where our 200 applications are. And as I said, if I scroll all the way down, there's one here for Zoom. We got several for Zscaler, some for Workday, some for Slack, some for various authentication systems. And by the way, you could go up here and search for what you're looking for. But I want to introduce you and talk to two different applications. The first application I want to talk to is our host process app. So if I go into my library here, I've already installed this. And so you can go into the library, you can find this host and process metric app. And in this host and process metric app, I see I've got several dashboards. These purplish icons are my new dashboards. And if I look at host metric overview, and I click on it, it shows me that particular dashboard. So here I'm looking at my host metric overview of my various cloud environments. And I can see I've got a host with a high CPU utilization running about 90%. Down here, I can see uh, my network receive and send errors. And I can see they're pretty active. I can see my memory utilization, disk utilization. There's a nice gauge. I can see hosts that are running a little hot here as far as memory or disk. And so I get an idea of you know, what's going on with my environment. Now, in our case, what I want to do is this host with high CPU utilization running about 90%. I want to see why. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This is going to then take me and open up the side panel where I can see a, a you know, graph of what's happening. And it takes me and says there's a linked dashboard. I can link my dashboards together that says host metric CPU. And I can then go to that particular dashboard. So here I have a dashboard that breaks it down a bit more. And really what I want to understand is what processes are causing the CPU to be high. So down here, I have a graph that talks about CPU usage by process. And here I can see that I've got some processes here that are fairly low. My cursor, over, my payment app checkout is running about less than 20%. My um, payment app backup is also running about 20%. That's normal. This green one up here, that's not normal. My payment app monitor is running about 82% or so, 82, 85, whatever. You can actually see the value. So I want to know who's running this, this process, and maybe I can then work with them to figure out how we can make it more efficient. You know, again, if they're using a, uh, uh, a, a monitoring account, a system type account, then it should run you know, in the background without any problems. If a user is actively engaged running this, then I've got you know, that maybe explain why it's running at 80 some odd percent. 
So what I can do here is, again, I can click on this line. And again, it pulls out the side panel over here. And here it takes me to another dashboard where I can then see my process metrics and the details of my process metrics. And so I'm going to click on that. And that takes me to another dashboard where I can see this particular process, which is my payment app, is running at 80 some odd percent. I can see the memory usage of this app. And then down here, I can see that this app has been run by a user named John. Not me, but another user named John. And so now I can reach out to John and say, hey, John, uh, we've got uh, this payment app that you're running. Why are you running with your account? Why are we not running it with a system account? Or maybe we want to see how it's being run so that we can make it and see if we can get its CPU footprint a bit smaller. So hopefully you're able to see how we can go into these built-in applications and we can go at a very high level and investigate and see what's going on without having to necessarily go and create a metric query or a log query or any of that fun stuff. Any questions about that? That's our first step. Okay. By the way, if you want to close up these tabs, you can obviously close them up one at a time. But if you grab the three vertical dots up here on any tab, you have an option that says close all tabs. And I'm going to close all tabs. Okay. okay. Where did you click to get the details on the user? Okay. So what I did was I went into the app, the host and process metric app that's installed here. I went into the overview. I saw that I had a host with a high CPU utilization. I clicked on that. That linked me to this dashboard, host metrics. And then down here in my CPU process by usage, I found the process that's running hot. I clicked on that. That gives me the ability to see the details of that. And now I can see here in my log data, this is really log data here, I can see who's running that application and what they're doing. By the way, in these queries, I could click on the three dots and I can open this up as a metric query. And I can see basically what this metric query is and the kind of information that we're seeing. So I can see the underlying metric query if I want it. So I hope that answers your question, Wilfred, uh, Wilfredo. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you very much for asking. And again, I'm going to go ahead and close these little rascals up and close these tabs up. Okay. Okay. Right. Sven points out, and thank you very much for pointing this out, Sven. Sven says, you know, the app catalog on our end only has host metrics, not host and process metrics. I should have told you, and I apologize for this. The host and process metric app is not out yet. It should be out at the end of the month. So this is, this is coming. So Sven points out when he goes into the app catalog and he searched for host, he sees this one. He doesn't see the host and process metric. I'm going to give you a sneak peek or gave you a sneak peek at a new app that's coming out that you will see, should see it here uh, probably in a week or so. Okay. So thank you. Now, speaking of that, I am going to look at a MySQL app and that's MySQL app. That's the next one I'm talking about. That app does exist. Okay. And if you wanted to, you can install it. So the second app I want to get into here is an app dealing with MySQL. And again, if I go into, now actually close up all these tabs, if you don't mind. If I go into the library, or if you go into the library, and here in the library, if we find a folder called Metric Workshop, and in the Metric Workshop, there's the MySQL Workshop. And if I click on MySQL Workshop and I open it up, I got a bunch of folders and one dashboard, MySQL Overview. And if I click on MySQL Overview, it's going to give me an overview of MySQL environment. Now, again, if you have those of you happen to be running MySQL, it's probably pretty nice here. I can see my server uptime. I can see my number of errors, my replication errors, some nice key performance metrics here telling you about your MySQL. And by the way, we've got similar ones for um, DB2. We've got similar ones for Microsoft SQL, you know, so forth and so on. Now, one of the areas that I want to focus on here is the excessively slow queries. I have 5,170 queries in the last 24 hours that are running excessively slow. So 
as we did before, I can click on this. That side panel comes out from the right. And I could look into logs and all that stuff. But really what I want to do is I want to go to this link dashboard. And I want to look at MySQL slow queries. And now this takes me to another dashboard, which is focused on my slow queries. So here I can see my top IP addresses of slow queries, my top users who are firing off slow queries, slow queries by host. I can even see down here the slow queries by different type of statements, a select statement, an update statement, and so forth and so on. I can see the average execution time of my different slow queries. Something I forgot to point out in your legend, if you want to, you can turn on or turn off some of these values so that you can kind of filter and see what you want. You can also filter up here in the filter line. But as I scroll down, I'm able to see some data here that talks about my top 10 slow queries by average execution time. So I can see what these queries are, and maybe I can then start to analyze these queries, look at their execution plans, and see if I can improve upon these. So I can now, I, I see which of my top 10 slowest queries, and now I can take action on these queries to see what's happening. I can also see by frequency. So the point is, this dashboard makes it very easy for me to take to a metric and I see I've got a problem, some value that's out of whack, and then I can use it with other dashboards. And it kind of tells me walk through the story and the problem of this issue of excessively slow queries. And now I can see what's causing that. And now I can then take corrective action. So any questions about this example? And again, if you're uh, following along in your uh, metric workshop, uh, you'll see that we're on... Uh, the metric app demo here, and this first page here is uh, the host and process metric app. The second page, page six of 11, is the MySQL app. Okay. Okay. Mohammed says, how come create table takes too long? I don't know. I've now got to go back into MySQL, and I've got to look at the query execution plan to see why it's taking so long. Why is that particular query taking long? And again, I need to investigate and look into that, okay? Uh, somebody asked, how did I get to the slow query page from the MySQL overview page? And I apologize. I do this all the time, so I, it, to me, it's second nature. But for you guys, it's the first time you're seeing it. So here, if I'm in MySQL overview page, and if I click on my excessively slow queries panel here, that brings up this link, which then I can click on. And that takes me to this panel. And at the bottom of this panel is where my queries are. So to answer, I mean, Mohammed, hopefully that answers your question. But the previous question that was asked is, you know, now that I know I've, you know, it's create tables taken so long, why? Don't know. I have to analyze it with my SQL to understand why, where is it taking so much time? And what can I do as far as a tuning perspective to improve its performance? Those of you who are DBAs understand what I'm talking about, I suspect. Uh, I know I certainly understand the concept here. So there are things you can do with regards to your various statements uh, and values and parameters uh, so that you give it more resource or you, know, you control how much resource and stuff it uses, and therefore it will fix these problems. Okay. So this tells us what we need to look into, takes us to the next step. Are there any other questions here so far? All right. So my last conversation that I want to have with you here, and I'm just going to go ahead and advance the slides here a little bit. So we talked about the metric host processing app. We talked about the MySQL app. The next thing I want to talk about here is unified alerting. Unified alerting is going to allow us, if something is wrong, if a metric is running too hot or too cold or whatever, we can be notified of it. And so we're going to talk about this monitoring process. Now, some companies might think that if I create a query and I have a dashboard and I display that on a big screen in my network operation center, that's monitoring. And that may very well be for you. Okay. 
but I'm not talking about that kind of monitoring. I want to be notified. I want it to tickle my pager duty. I want it to send me an email. I want it to do something when we've got a problem. Okay. That's what I'm talking about with regards to monitoring. Now, as I said, technically I could have this information blasted on a screen somewhere in the network operation center, and this might be monitoring perfectly acceptable. In order to talk about the monitoring that I'm talking about, we're going to go open up the navigation panel. So again, if you need to, click on the symbol logic hamburger menu. Go down here to manage data. And under manage data, we have a section for alerts. That's really what I'm creating here as an alert. Now, in my alerts here, I've got monitors, I've got connections, I've got health events. We're going to focus on these monitors. We used to create metric monitors separate from log monitors. Now we create them all the same basic way in the monitors tab. So here in my monitors tab, if I click add, I can add a new monitor. Before I do that though, you can organize your monitors in folders. So maybe I've got a couple of AWS environments. I got a prod, I got a dev, I got a whatever. And you could create folders for prod, for dev, for whatever. And then inside there, you could obviously create your um, metric monitors, okay? So you can create folders to organize things. Now, as far as this new monitor goes, when I click on it, you'll see here, do I want to create a log monitor or a metric monitor? Well, since our focus is on metrics, I'm going to grab my CPU sys. Actually, I'm going to grab my CPU... Let's grab something better here, CPU sys. And so I want to grab my CPU sys, and if I don't specify a specific host, as you can see down here in my graph, I got lots and lots of results, all right? Lots and lots of results. So let's focus this a little bit on a specific host. So I'm going to go into source category equals, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my computer again. So I want my CPU system value, here, okay? And as you can tell, my CPU system value is fairly low, right? It's running at maybe as much as 3.5%. So I'm going to have to modify this example to get the type of alerts and stuff that I want, okay? Because normally on a CPU sys, I might, you know, look, you know, warn me when I get to 80%, notify me it's critical when we get to 90% or whatever you want. Those are, you know, that's probably when I want to be notified. But in our case, we can type in our query, which is what I've done. Then we can say, you know what? If I'm not getting data from this host, notify me. And not only will we notify you when you're not getting data with whatever criteria you choose, we'll also notify you when we recover and get the data back. So we'll tell you when there's a problem. We'll tell you when the problem goes away. So you define the criteria under which you want to be notified. So here for my warning, again, in this example, I'm going to say, you know what, if it gets a, uh, greater than uh, three, I want you to, you know, tell me that's a warning. Actually, I'm going to make it greater than two. There we go. And again, you can define your criteria. And again, you can be notified when you recover. You can recover at the same level as your alert or you can change it. You can recover at a different level than your alert. Okay. And then as far as critical, what is critical? Now, obviously, I would never set a CPU for criticality at 3%, but for this, I will, just so we can see what happens. So here, I define my triggers and the trigger types. Then down here, who do I want to notify? How do I want to notify you? Do I want to send a new email? Do I want to do a webhook and API hook into Slack or PagerDuty or some of those other nifty tools? Do I want to send it to Datadog? You know, lots of different ways that you can communicate within your organization. I'm going to choose to grab a new email. And then who do I want to send this to? Well, maybe I want to send it to the person that owns that machine. Maybe I want to send it to my network operations center. Maybe I want to send it to my sport team, whatever. Here under subject line, you can use a combination of dynamic and static text. So my trigger type would be something like missing data or missing data recovered, uh, warning or warning recovered, critical or critical recovered. 
And there's also a bunch of other variables here that I could use. Then I can actually type in a message here if I want to. And it will also add some other additional details in here. And then I decide, when does this email fire? When I'm missing data, recover. When I've got warnings, when I recover. You know, what criteria? You may want different emails to fire for different people. And so you can add a different notification here for, you know, maybe I want, when it's critical, I want to have a different notification. So... And then all you've got to do is give this thing a name and save it. Now, personally, I wish I, they put the save button down here at the bottom. So as I'm flowing through this, the save button's there at the end, but it's up here at the top. Not quite sure why, but that's okay. So now I see here are my monitors and I see the monitor I just created and I can see its current state. It's currently normal. I'm sure if I put some load or something on my system, I could get it to go warning. I can get it to go critical. If I want to, I can, of course, disable this. I can duplicate it. I can delete it. I can do all kinds of things. But I can also see here which of my uh, alerts are in a critical state, which are at warning states, which have been disabled. I'm going to go ahead and delete that monitor. I'm also going to go ahead and delete this other monitor that I created the last time I taught this. But that's how you and I can create monitors. What questions have you? Doing okay? All right, let's wrap it up. So, um, my hope is that you all take away from this that number one, our new metric interface makes it fairly easy to create powerful metric queries. That's the first thing I hope you realize. The second thing we talked about was those built-in applications to get you insight into what's going on without having to write a bunch of queries. And those are built and those are available for you right now with the accept out of host and process metric that's coming out at the end of the month. And then last, we talked about unified alerting and how we can create a metric alert to provide us proactive information, okay? John Duncan asked a question, will this recording be available to watch again? Yes, it will, John. Um, actually, what I've got to do, and I, I thought it was available, um, there is a link here, John. Um, let me go find it here real quick. there is a link that I'm gonna copy and put back in here um, that will take you to all of our courses and all of our workshops with the exception of this one. I asked my boss last week or two weeks ago to add this one in there with this recording and uh, he hasn't yet. So I will follow up on that today. But um, the short of it is if you go to that link and let me just stop my slides here for just a second. And let me go to that link here real quick. You'll see all of our courses and you'll see recordings for all of our courses. And like I said, there will be a, a metric uh, basic workshop here with links to that recording. One of these recordings I've got, you know, like I said, we've got several recordings of this class. You'll also have a link to the slides. You'll also have a link to that PDF document. Okay. So, uh, so hopefully, John, that answers your question. Thanks for asking. The last conversation piece is where do I go from here? Well, you could go into our documentation. Remember, that's help.sumologic.com. And we have a chapter on metrics. We have a chapter on Sumo Logic apps, all our various applications. We also have a bunch of YouTube videos for those of you who are into micro learning. If you go out to YouTube and you do a search for Sumo Logic, you'll find we've got a channel out there that we you know, talk about how to install a collector, how to install a source, uh, how to create metrics, how to do logs to metrics, all kinds of quick little five minute topics, you know, five minute videos to help you do specific things. And of course, as a trainer, I would be remiss in my duties not to, you know, not to mention that we also have a whole bunch of courses. So logically, if you wanna know more about metrics, this virtual search jam metric mastery class which is a three-hour class, 
um, is the logical thing to take after this if you want to know more about these classes, okay? And we also, by the way, besides doing these virtual classes at various time zones throughout the world, we also are trying to do regional search jams, if you will. So, for example, those of you in North America, we typically do North America search jams, we do European search jams, Asia Pacific search jams, and so forth and so on. Um, so you look at our schedules and go out to this website here if you want, and you can then see what's available. Uh, I hope at some point in time, once COVID numbers all get better and well and all that stuff, we start, you know, meeting up and traveling. We start holding these regional search jams face to face. So we get a chance to, you know, work together and collaborate together and meet and greet and, you know, break bread together and all that fun stuff. So that is that. What questions have you with regards to metrics and this presentation? All right. So that's all I've got, folks. So if you've got questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, we can go ahead. You guys can go ahead and sign out. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Thank you very much for joining us today. And like I said, I'll turn my camera back on to say thank you. And like I said, I wish you all a good, good day. And I hope you have a great time. And hope we'll see you in the class again real soon. That's all I've got. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, John, I think there were two questions from Dave Campbell in the chat. Oh, are there? Okay, sorry about that. Dave, let me see what we got here. Okay. No big deal. Okay, one question is, is there access to any abnorm uh, abnormality detection? Mm -hmm. um, we've got some functions in there for that. Um, I've got to look those up specifically, Dave. So I'm not 100% sure. I think we do have some various outlier functions and stuff you can use. Yeah, I know we've got an outlier function. So abnormality detection, we do have that in the outlier function. And then can you distinguish between a log monitor and a scheduled search? Uh, how long does a log monitor, uh, how does a log monitor process? And how frequently does the log monitor run to check the criteria? Oh, I got you. I got you. As new data comes in. Okay, so it's, right. it's, it's basically, it's a live monitor. Kind of a trigger, it triggers on new data in that, right. in that time series. Correct. Correct. The other thing too, by the way, is, um, well, in our log data, we also have um, the ability to set up some sort of a scheduled search type thing for alerts. Sure. I do that all the time. I do that as well. So. I do that all the time. And I'm trying to bridge between looking at life through that lens and yeah. trying to understand if it makes sense to do log symmetrics for certain things. Sure. Sure. No, it makes sense. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. And I'll, uh, I'll dig into the log symmetrics stuff immediately. Okay, good. Thanks, Excellent. man. It's good, good stuff. The uh, interface looks really good. You're kind of playing catch up on some of that stuff, but um, that's what the that's what the world's all about. Competing. There you go. Doing it well. Well, thank you, sir. All right. Have a all great right. day, man. Thank you so much. Good good session. All right. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for attending. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, folks? Otherwise, I'm going to stop my sharing, and I'm going to close up the meeting. You all have a wonderful day. Please be safe out there.